Hi, this is Mark Barnett with Virtual Backgrounds. I uh, am a field consultant for them and I wanted to welcome you for tonight's webinar, Creating Your Own Projected Backgrounds. And it's primarily for the people with the projected uh, virtual background system. If you have one, this will be very helpful to you. If you don't have one, you're going to get a chance to see some of the fun things that we're able to do and how we can be so different in the use of this system for our clients. It's all about uh, the client and making uh, great images for them. So imagine the possibilities as you're looking at this of just what you can do in making your own system. What we're going to cover is why the heck you should make your own slides. That makes sense. Why should you do it if there's some out there that you could already use? We'll explain that. What kind of images work the best? That's always good to know. Actual slide or an inkjet slide? Which would be best for your purpose? And then where would you have them made? Does it have to be a slide? Or can you use something else for backgrounds? Those are the type of things that we're going to be covering. Now, making your slides is important, especially if you've been using old slides that have been deteriorated both in density and color. Now this, this happens sometimes and it doesn't matter where you get them, but if they're old slides, they have a color shift, they could just not be what you need. These slides like that are almost impossible to use without some sort of a modifier. And then and only then are they useful as a background. Here's an example. If you look in the background and you see the density of the background in the shadow areas right here where it should really be dark, it does not match. It it's kind of looks washed out. We don't want that. That is not what is going to make your images look the best. The whole idea with this system is to make it blend and look like either they're there in the scene or they're there in front of a muslin or a special background that you have or whatever you're doing. And that's what this does. It gives you backgrounds and it enables you to do a lot with them, change them, use them uh, and, and customize them for the client. So that's why projecting can be so powerful in making you different. Now, when using your system, it's imperative that the shadows in your background match the shadows of your client in density and consistency. If the blacks in your background are washed out, then the scene will not be believable. For instance, the other picture, this is a close-up of that same picture and we see back here in the shadows it's not very dark but we see the shadows along the jeans here or under the arm are much darker now this is the reality of the client and if you want it to look like she is in that reality of the outdoor scene you've got to match the kind of lighting and you've got to have that background match your client so that's real important now why should you make your own slides? Well, do you want to look like everybody else or do you want to be different? So this helps you personalize your style. If you live in a certain part of the country and you want to do outdoor photography and it rains, you can't very well go outside. With this system you can. If you go out, take images of your back of where you would like to take people and, and do this, uh, then you have that area in your own personal file and you can take them outside even though they're inside. And that's what we do. So to bring the outdoors inside with no weather problems. Plus the fact it gives your clients a custom background that nobody else has. And if you don't want to ever use it again, you don't have to. You can make up a new one. So it's entirely up to you. You can make and customize backgrounds for them so that nobody else will do it. But let's say somebody else down the street has this same system. Guess what? They're not going to use it the same as you. Every person that I have ever taught when they come into the workshop has managed to change the background enough from somebody else that it's their style. So it might be the same slide but they do something different and that's what you're able to do. It's not like having one muslin and not being able to change or do anything different. Personalizing your style, 
you've got seniors, high school seniors. You can give them some crazy stuff. You have brides. You can make their stuff very elegant. You can have uh, location uh, images that you use and use as a background. You can also have fantasy photography. How hard would it be to build a fantasy background complete if you didn't have this system? You'd have one background, period. Well, we can use this one as an example. You've got cottages. Well, you could turn that into a forest, too. Or you could take down the fence and, and change it into a lake or whatever you want to do. And you still have the foreground props with no problem. And you're covering for the full length um, where the scene meets the floor. It's not a problem. So you have also your elegant images where you have a young lady here that's beautifully lit with a very elegant background so you can do all kinds of styles and then you have kind of a funky get down got her hat on with just a, a, a silly background that makes no it's kind of a nonsensical type background whatever your style that's what you can portray now we talked about bringing outdoors inside we've got a fire how, how many people could do this inside your studio? Not too many, if any. The beach. The beach is real popular. Everybody wants to do the beach. Well, you know, if you go out to the beach and you don't have good lighting, it really doesn't pop like it, like it could. So whenever I did beach photography, I always took light out there, and customers loved it because they had good colors. Now, this one is a little bit different because we're using a filter to give the effect that he's in the water. That is not done with virtual backgrounds. I don't want you to think that it is. But what it does do is it gives him uh, a way to cover up the horizon line of where the background meets the floor. And this is from Flaming Pear. It's called Flood. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. And then of course we actually have plexiglass here on the floor for this young lady at the beach and then he built the set around uh, slides like this. So uh, there's a lot of different things that you can do about bringing the outdoors back inside. Custom backgrounds. My goodness, you can do pretty much whatever you want. You can use any background. You can make a slide from any background and then you have it. We have all kinds of stuff. Just it's It doesn't matter. You can just make backgrounds out of most anything. What kind of images work the best? Usually something, especially if it's a realistic scene, with a direction of light. That's real important because if you want it to look real, you've got to match your lighting. You've got to have your image. You've got to light it the way your image is lit. And when I say light, you have to light your client the way your, Im your um, background is lit so that it looks real. The nonsensical or textured backgrounds give total lighting freedom. You can sit here and light them any way you want and because it doesn't show up in the background you have no problem. So just want you to know that you can do so much more with this system and, and making your own backgrounds because you can make it look any way you want. Images that work the best, like I said, most anything with the direction of light of doing realistic scenes. Such as, we have a sunrise at Tybee Island, Georgia. Beautiful sunrise. Okay. Here is a beautiful interior of someone's home or maybe a museum with artwork on there. We have a workshop and it too, look down here, has a direction of light. You have shadows here. That makes a great background. So depending, you might have a worker or an old man with a beard, a gray beard in his hands and have working tools in his hands and you put him in this background, very believable. Then of course you have outdoor pictures or indoor pictures with light coming through windows which gives you directional light. You match that, people are really happy with the results. So here we have light coming in from the left, our bride's right it works. Here's a gentleman in an auditorium. Doesn't really give too much as far as direction of light, but it looks good. 
here we have another one where it's a little more of a overcast day not a lot of harsh sunlight so it blends well in this case here one we have early morning sunlight we actually have an orange gel in here that gives you just a little hint of morning light coming in you see it on the tree you see it a little bit on the subject matter so it looks a little more real speaking of real I was testing these two particular slides and I wanted to see just how well they could blend. So I knew how the light was coming because I took the pictures originally. But I wanted to see how they'd look so I dressed the part. This was done both in the same day. But I did it in my apartment living room. Sorry I'm not wealthy. I don't have a big house or anything. But <laughs> as you can see very small screen and I did those images and the only question was how well did I light it? looks pretty good a lot of people think wow that that's right in them right in there so you can do a lot of different things with this system if you're using the outdoor or realistic scenes for slides make sure you can match the lighting in your studio to the lighting of the slide otherwise it will not be believable it doesn't have to be perfect make it believable sometimes there the slides are a little cooler okay you can warm them up with some of your gels and if you don't have gels, that's something you need to really consider getting. You should call up Virtual Backgrounds and order a set of the colored gels. They're game changers. If you have a system, they are absolute game changers and will allow you so much flexibility in doing everything. Outdoor realistic scenes, however, are not the best choice if you're doing inkjet printing of slides. There's just not enough density nor clarity that can be printed on an inkjet printer that will make it really believable. Some might work, and I've had some work, but for the most part, you, it just isn't going to cut it. Now, we talked about realistic. I used an orange gel on an accent light that made this scene of a silhouette even more believable. You see the accent light, the orange gel right here and right here makes that totally believable. Didn't have to put it on there, could have just done a silhouette. How many have even tried that? How many of you have gone and just shut off your studio lights and just kept the projector light on and have somebody interact with no light on them and have a silhouette. You can do it all day long. In fact, think about high school seniors. You could have them interacting with each other if you have a, several there. If you have, let's say, an engagement couple or a wedding couple and they have their dress that makes it obvious what they're doing, you can put it into um, a situation and have them interacting and actually do a whole storyline right there in the studio of just silhouettes. So hopefully that gives you some ideas of some of the crazy things that you can do with this. Uh, trying to do that elsewhere be very very tough to do. Okay, the nonsensical or textured backgrounds. Now this is really what gives me the most pleasure. You can take any slide and turn it into just a nonsensical or textured background. It doesn't matter what the slide is. And that's what's so cool. You can buy slides like this. You can make slides like this. Uh, textures, whatever you want to do. That's all fine and good. But man, your creativity here is only limited by your own mind. Older slides can work fine. In this particular case, the tonality of this gal's skin, I just kind of saw it and I knew I had this slide. A little bit too much red in there. It was an older slide. It wasn't one of the best, but it kind of works. Looks like she's in the balcony looking down on the, on the stage of this uh, theater. Here's just a standard slide of flags that I had made. I bought the images, made slides of them, and then I combined them with this young lady in her high school senior pictures because she was uh, uh, wanting something with the American theme in it. Full length. I get more questions about full length. Oh, well, how do you do full length? Well, if you're a photographer and, and you've ever used a short muslin, 
then all you do is exactly the same thing as you would do normally. You just build a transition in there, whether it be some plants blocking it, whether it be a piece of um, flooring or something like that up against it. You just make sure that the transition comes in to your floor. And how you do that is entirely up to you. Here's the one we were talking about earlier where the photographer used the um, filter flood from Flaming Pear. You can find it online. Great, great uh, filter for, for doing this. You can make it choppy water, smooth water, the reflection strong, not so strong. I mean, it's just amazing what you can do with this filter, and it's a lot of fun. Very simple to use. So play. So go out, get it, play with it. You'll love it. It's really a great thing. We saw the bride earlier. Look what we he did for the transition. He had a floor. Looks like tile. The tonality of this tile kind of matches what's what's in the background. And then all he did was the transition line of the back of the bottom of the screen to the floor, all he did was burn this in. She covers a good portion of it and it's perfectly believable. This young fella is blo blocking that line along with the fence and the shrubbery and rocks in front of the uh, bottom of the screen. So you have a nice transition there. It all works. So full length really is not a problem. It's just how well you as a photographer because you still have to be a photographer. This is not magical. You still have to be a photographer. You still have to pose. You still have to light. You still have to figure out what your theme is. Hopefully you talk with your clients and you find out what they want. So then you have slides ready for backgrounds that fit the theme or the colors or whatever you want to do uh, or what they want to do when you have your consultation with them. And if you're not doing consultations, I recommend it highly because people, if, if you don't know what they want, how can you give them the portrait of a lifetime? And you're giving them something very special, so treat it as such. And I'm sure most of you do, but I know some don't. Now, an actual slide or an inkjet slide, which is best? Well, that uh, depends. Actual slides you can do with your film camera. All right, you can actually take your film camera, put some slide film out there, and go out and take pictures of what you want to use as backgrounds. And then you can also make a digital image and have it made into a slide. Inkjet slides will be from your digital image. Okay, some people go, what? Inkjet slides? You're kidding me. Believe it or not, they can work very well, but in their own context. Inkjet is very cheap and can be very fast. Now, using your film camera with slide film, not hard to do. But let me tell you what happens. You need to think about, and if you have the system, you know that if you're using super slides, that it's the center of the slide that gets put on the background more so than the edges. You can slide it back and forth or you can slide it up and down and still cover some of the areas of the slide. But the main focal point of the slide is usually in the center. So if you're taking images and you want to use them as backgrounds, back up, take the picture so that it is in the center of the picture and you have a lot of space around it. If you don't, what you'll have is if you're too close up, which is not good, you'll not be able to manipulate the slide to make it look as if the person is within the context of that slide. In other words, make them their size relative to the size of the slide. If you have it small in your slide, then with the zooming lens of the projector, you can change the relative size and make it match your client. That's very important, so keep that in mind. But if you do your own slides, you can either cut the image out, you have them developed, cut it out, and you can mount them yourself, or you can just let the lab do it. Now, most of the labs are going to do 35 millimeter. Um, I don't know how many have super slides, but you can always ask. And the lab that can do it needs to be able to, to convert digital images into slides. So you have to make sure of that.
But 35 millimeter slides will work. But what I said before is what you want to show needs to be in the center with room around it. That way you can zoom in and out and the smaller it is um, with good clarity, the larger and uh, well the more zooming capabilities you have. It really works well. So remember no close-ups if you're recording your own slides. Textures however they can be close up. Um, if you have textures in rugs, walls, uh, different things, things you find on the internet, uh, whatever you want that can all be great to make into slides. The biggest thing is don't um, do close-ups for like brick walls unless you're only using it as a texture and you don't want to make it look real. If uh, you have a brick wall and it's a neat pattern and you just want to use it large or small, still back up because you can always zoom in, make it larger. But if you ever wanted to use it as a brick background, making it a believable one, then you still got to be able to make it the right size relative to the client. And you might want to show it far away, you might want to show it close up. Um, it just depends on, on the scene that you're doing. But with this system, it allows you to do that. Where would you have them made? Any lab that can process slides from digital files, like I mentioned. Now here's um, one that we use quite a bit. He is very good. Al uh, it's Gamma Tech in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And they have instructions on their website, which is gammatech.com. I have it further back in the slideshow for you to write down. They do an absolutely terrific job. Um, they do super slides or 35 millimeter. 35 is a little cheaper, and you'll hear me say that again later on. But they uh, they have complete instructions out on their website how to do that. The inkjet slides, you do the printing. You gotta have a pretty decent inkjet printer though. It's not just for anybody. Now the inkjet slides are still pretty cool, but I had somebody tell me that they actually take the images down, take the files down, and have them do a um, transparency on the laser copy at Office Depot. So they're letting somebody else print it, and they don't have to go all through the page. They set up the page. They don't have to go all through the whole process of printing themselves. They let Office Depot do it. And they say they've had some pretty decent results. Uh, there again, I would probably venture to say it's not going to be the best for outdoor scenes or realistic scenes. I could be wrong. You might get a laser printer that really does a great job, but that's going to be all very subjective. Okay. I'd mentioned that 35 millimeter is going to be perfectly fine and are somewhat cheaper the 2x2 two two format, more of the slide, so you can use it both horizontally and vertically, and you can move it back and forth. Gamma Tech, I mentioned them on the last slide. They're located in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and they give all the instructions on their website, and it is gammatech.com. Very simple, but they do a great job. Now, making inkjet slides step by step. Okay, I have an article. We're going to I'm going to give you a link to it, but I'm going to also we're going to put it out on our website probably and um so that you'll be able to download it. Uh, I don't know when that's going to happen, but uh we do have a PDF of it and if nothing else, you'll see my email later where if you need it, I can email it to you. Okay, cuz I don't have your emails from uh you attending this webinar. What do we need? First, an image an image that you want to print, whether it be a scene or a texture. Secondly, a good inkjet printer. Third, a computer, of course. Four, you have to have some super slide or 35 millimeter slide mounts. You can purchase those from B&H, which is a photo and video uh, store in New York. And you can go online, and it's B I think it's bnhphotovideo.com. Um, you have to have a working knowledge of Photoshop to do this, and you need a special transparency film and it's called premium OHP transparency film TPU 100 and you can also purchase that from B&H or from www.pictorico.com. 
Now this uh, film, this is the package it looks like. It's available from B&H at around $18 for 20 sheets. So it's not expensive because you can probably get about 20 to 20. You might even get as many as 30 slides on there depending on your layout. It's not real, real tough to uh, do the layout. But remember this, the inkjet is grainier. The inkjet is not as saturated in color. The inkjet is not the best choice for realistic scenes. Realistic scenes need to be lab transparencies. But I want to touch on this grainier part for just a moment. The inkjet is a series of dots that simulate colors and things like that. Now if you ever did a real up close to an inkjet printer, you'll see it's just little dots of color whereas slides are continuous tone. So the inkjet, one of the reasons it doesn't work so well is number one, the inkjet ink is not as, as dark or saturated or I, I can't think of the word right now. Um, it's not as opaque as continuous tone uh, colors. So light shining through it is not going to give you the density. You're also going to have color shifts. So be aware of that. If you enlarge a slide and it's going onto a screen much larger, those little dots separate. So you're not going to have the density that you would have normally. So that's one reason why inkjet is not as good for the realistic scenes. But it is great for textures. Now I make templates for myself and I drag images into the template and in the newer versions of Photoshop they become smart objects. In other words, I'll have my template open and I have a JPEG over here of the image that I'm preparing and I have it already sized uh, as far as the um, uh, PPI and I just drag it in there and it makes it fit in there. I don't, I could do it by placing through Photoshop and all that, but I don't have to. With five and six, you can just drag it into your image and it just appears. Well, when it does that, it turns into a smart object and then it makes it totally editable. And all you do is grab your corners and size it to fit in what I call my red area. And you'll see what I'm talking about shortly. And then I flatten the image uh, and save it as something else. Or I just save it as a JPEG and it's flattened and it's over to the side for me to make up or send out. Either way I want to do it. Now, the instructions I was telling you about to make the inkjet slides can be downloaded at this particular uh, download. Now, if you do this, it'll have a little red box over to the right if you go out to this link, right click on that download and then it'll have a menu, copy uh, product or whatever it is to from this link or whatever it says. Just choose the correct one and you can copy it to your computer. Now it's going to be called Making Ink Inkjet Slides, so I don't know where it's going to put it on your computer, so if you can't find it, do a search for it. Or if you know where all your downloads go, then just go there and it should be there. And I'm not going to try to read it to you, so if you want to try to be writing this down and uh, go from there. Now, the size of the red area is to be placed in the center of each 35 millimeter slide are as follows. You go up under image size, uh, things like that. And so we're going to make the width 0.75 in the height 1.25 and the resolution is going to be 2750. Now you can use that resolution for both um, inkjet or what things that you're sending out to Gamma Tech. Gamma Tech is the one that wants it at 2750. You can still use that resolution and print it on your inkjet. No, your printer won't print at that resolution uh, and things like that, but that's okay. It, it's not going to matter. That way you don't have to keep files off to the side for inkjet and you don't have to keep a separate file for those that you want to send off to Gamma Tech. So just use the same same process in putting everything together and you'll be fine. Now when we go to the um, super slides 
this is what they look like. Now you notice that I put a border around it and this is actually a little smaller than the opening of the super slide. I do that for a reason and that's because I want it a little smaller so that my zooming capabilities or my movement under the projection lens is greater. I can move it around more and then I can zoom it more easily because it's smaller. So it gives me much more workability, whether it be 35 or the 2x2 two two, um, uh, super slides. So play with that. That's not written in stone. Do it what's more comfortable with you. I'm just trying to give you an idea of how to do it and how it works. Here you see the width 125, 125. Works good for me, 2750 pixels per inch. You were good to go. Now, slides grouped together to print on an inkjet printer reduces the cost of each slide to a negligible amount. So I will gang print these. Sometimes I'll just do one side at a time. I'll cut this, this uh, sheet of transparency in half. Now be careful when you're using this transparency film. When you pull it out, the side that you're going to print on makes a difference. If you print on the wrong side, the ink is just going to run all over. It's going to make a mess on not only that sheet, but it's going to make a mess of your inkjet printer, and then you have to run things through it to clean it up. It wastes a lot of ink. So it's imperative that you use the correct size. So read the instructions. If you can't remember what I'm about to tell you, read the instructions. Don't be like most photographers normally are, and where we don't read instructions. We just think we know read the instructions. On this particular film, when you pull it out, the side you want to print on, if you're looking at it and it's kind of a milky surface, there's going to be a the top right hand corner is going to have part of the corner cut off. It's just lopped off. That's the side you print on. That's the top. If it's on the left side, it's wrong. Now it could be on the bottom left and be correct or the top right and it be correct. So if you're not sure, read the instructions. And if you decide to cut it in half, make sure the piece that you aren't using at the time, you cut off that little tiny corner just like you did on the other and put that to the side so you'll know which side is up. Not rocket science, but hey, makes a difference and it sure will make you do better in your printing. Okay, here's some example of some inkjet prints. I took images, I made them into inkjet prints, and voila, that's what you get. Um, are they perfect? If they were realistic scenes, they just wouldn't look that great. But when you have like a grunge wall, looks great. There's two of them like that. Um, a, an artsy looking flower, that's cool. Polka dots, no problem. And then the purple, I just did a um, inkjet slide um, and I made that in, in Photoshop. I just put some color in there and just went back and forth and made an image. Works well. Now, this was a fun project. This was actually conceived and printed in 45 minutes at our workshop in San Marcos. Um, we had a gentleman that owned a big dog motorcycle. Um, kind of a burly guy. John is really a really good guy, but you'd look at him and you'd probably walk on the other side of the street if you saw him late at night because he's kind of a tough looking guy. He really is. Nicest guy you ever want to meet though. He wanted, uh, he wanted to do a picture with him and this logo, so we pulled the logo down off of the internet and I created a slide, took it into Crystal at our front office, and she printed it on our inkjet because I had some of the material with me and brought it back into me and we turned it into a slide. Now this is not John, this is me, but uh, he did not want his picture taken with that logo, with that bike, with that little scooter there. We were doing it kind of as a funny. Uh, so he did not want that. But if you notice, remember me telling you how grainy it gets? You can look here to the left, see the big dog, really saturated, you look to the right and the black, there's little dots because of the separation of making it large. So the lines are not as clear, the colors are not as saturated. 
it just kind of gives you a, a funkier look. But it works. You could you could do this without any problem. A lot of times if it's not words, you want to blur that background anyway because you don't want people just competing with a super sharp background. And that goes for your regular slides also. Sometimes you do, but sometimes you don't. Now what's fun is you saw the slide earlier of this uh, high school senior. And when I made the slide, I put her name in here. And there it appears in the slide. So now you have this finished slide. And she was just tickled to death. So you have the image that I took it from, printed it from, made the slide. You can see where it's not as sharp, but it still works. Yes, you have the color shifts, and you're going to have that. Now, images taken with my iPhone of a wall and then ice cubes from my iced tea glass. I made them into slides, inkjet slides, and mixed them up with a colored gel. So there's the wall. There's the image with a gel. Looks great. Now you can zoom, excuse me, zoom that in and out. You can do all kinds of fun things with it. You can also do it horizontal. Ice from my iced tea glass. Putting on with a red font. Same image. But I could blur it and it's just more of a texture. But even still, you can make anything you want into a background with this. That's the fun part and it makes you so different than everybody else. Everybody else has the same thing over and over again. Now, let's say the guy down the street, he has these same two slides, right? He bought the system. These are in the starter set. Well, you see what I did? I actually laid an inkjet slide on top of these slides just to change it up. I just wanted to show you some examples how you can use a regular slide, add an, uh, some texture from an inkjet slide, you've got something totally different. And just depending on what you're after, whether it will work or not. Here is some uh, decor from a casino when I was out in Las Vegas, took the picture with my iPhone, turned it into an inkjet slide. And we had these gals posing for us at a convention, and I took this image. And I have several more. In fact, I zoomed the background in, and it, you wouldn't believe the difference. Now here's that sunflower. The image that we used for the inkjet slide. Here's the finished image. And I had um, kind of painted this up a little bit, but it softened. And we softened it up in the background, and there you have the finished image. Now, the inkjet slide that with just color is fun because you can make any color you want and then you can go in in your digital files if you want uh, or in Photoshop um, and change the hue so you can make this almost any color combination you want and make several slides and not have to duplicate the slide again except in different colors and then that's the resulting image from that okay Customizing for your client. Oh man, I can't tell you how important this can be. Your client, if he needs something specific, which I'm hoping you ask your clients what they want, you can give it to them faster, better than anybody else without this system. We all know, I mean, I can take probably 50 images in half an hour, good images with different backgrounds, by the time it takes you to do two muslin changes, maybe three muslin changes, and get good images. Because it, it, you just can't change as quickly as I could. So, and I can, I can make, it, make them be anywhere if we want, or I can give them different textures, or I can use logos in the backgrounds. So we can customize anything for anybody at any time. Sometimes it requires you to get with the people ahead of time, which you should be doing anyway, and then you can either have a slide made, and if you have one made, it might be an inkjet if it's texture. If you want to have one made, it might cost you 10 bucks for that slide. Is the customer worth it? Might be, especially if you can customize it to exactly what he needs. 
So give that some thought. That's very, very powerful. Okay, now one of the ways we use to customize slides are, goodness, just pieces of plastic. Do you remember the old seat covers? That's what this is. Bubble wrap, larger bubble wrap, even larger bubble wrap. These are part of a plastic tray. This is part of a plastic tray, and this is part of a napkin holder. All these, anything transparent, can be used and projected on the screen either on top of a slide, without a slide, with, an, with a gel, or what have you, to give you whatever texture you have. You can blur it, you can zoom in on it, you can change it. Now, add that with gobos. You can do the same thing. You can do it small, you can do it large, you can blur it, you can sharpen it. You can actually layer it to where you can look through a window and see, with a color, colorful slide, somebody that is um, in church. It looks like a stained glass window or an outdoor scene. But all that's possible with this. So right now we've cr with, with just these right here, that's a thousand backgrounds that you could do if you have your gels. So it's tremendous. Okay, here's, here's an example of using a piece of plastic, a red gel, and a, a, a gobo or a designer disc as we call them. These are more designer discs. This is a designer disc holder and more gels. These are textures that most people would not even think of. These are my blinds in my living room when they're closed. Just took a picture, tilted it, and now it's, it's going to be a slide. This is more decor at a casino in Las Vegas and I can turn that into a background. I haven't done so yet but add a gel, blur it, not blur it, whatever you want. It's a texture. You can make somebody the star so to speak. So you can do a lot of different things. Now this is that overlay I talked about. All I did was go into Photoshop, created a black smudge, took and drew lines across it or a racer However, I can't even remember how I did. There's so many different ways to do it. And then took that, and you can lay that on top of your slides. So there's the inkjet slide with another inkjet slide of texture to give you different colors. There it is with bubble wrap. Now, does that look good to me? No, not necessarily, but it might fit the situation, but it does open up the possibilities of what you might be able to do with that. Here's with a piece of plastic over it just with a, a fine grain so it just kind of changes it up a little bit more. Here's an outdoor scene. Here's an outdoor scene with the piece of plastic. Here's the outdoor scene with the piece of plastic and a red gel. Here's a little zoomed in and blurred. Here's a lot more zoomed in and blurred. All from this Im first image. So just because it's an image doesn't mean it can't be used as a texture. Do I have to use the gels? Not necessarily. I could blur it. I could do a lot of different things. I could not use the plastic and just use the gel and then blur it. So you're, you're in fact, I'll go one step further. You can actually stack slides. If they're not too dark or too dense of slides, you can put two slides on top of each other, blur it, and it gives you colored texture. It's amazing what you can do. So even a bad slide can be made to look good. That's what I was talking about at the beginning of this program. Now, using gobos with scenes, plastics and gels. It's so simple. Here's a plastic piece with a blue gel and a gobo. There's the gobo out of focus. It took me less than a second to do that by just changing the focus. And here's where I zoom it in still less than a second to do that. So three different looks, not totally different, but if I wanted them to, I could have either turned the, turned the uh, gobo, I could have changed the color, I could have done a lot of different things. I could add something else, could have changed the gobo. But that's how fast you can work. Now here, looks like an outdoor scene where the outdoor is all blurred. That's fine, you can do that. Now here's one that you can see outside and everything looks great. It's in focus. 
Here's one that you could use uh, with multicolor and look like a church stained glass window. But basically all I did was change the gobo here and add a red um, gel along with a piece of plastic. So it's this slide of the outdoors with a piece of plastic, red gel, and a different gobo. And then here is without the red color gel. So you can see that it's still the same slide, but because of the plastic and the gobo looks totally different. The opportunities to make new images are just beyond reason. I mean, you have so many choices, and it's only limited by your own creativity. As I showed you earlier, using my iPhone, I took a picture of the wall outside. That's in, in uh, New Orleans. Added red gel after I made it into a slide, and there we have an image. Uh, this image right here, the yellow and black, nice and dense here, but as an inkjet slide, not so dense, like I was saying to you. Still works. It's a little bright for me, but I just wanted to show you the example of what you can do. This was off the internet. It's just a texture I came across. This is an ink blot that I made uh, in Photoshop, made an inkjet slide, and I can turn it any way I want, but this is the way I, I did it. Added a excuse me, an orange gel, and it works just fine. Now here's one. Here's a slide that comes in your starter set. And, um, and this is the newer starter set. If you had your system for a while, then no, you did not get this. But it is available to you, I believe. So here's a young lady. And basically, she's competing with that background because it's sharp, she's sharp. So that doesn't do anything for me. So I wanted to soften that background. All I did was take it out of focus. That's all. Now I added a warming gel because it was just a little too cool for me. I liked the warmth of adding a little bit of a warming gel. So that worked perfect for me. Then I thought, OK, well, let's add a gobo. I added a gobo. Next. I zoom in that gobo. So I have made five different looks in, and I say 30 seconds. I, I could be wrong. It might have taken less time to do it. I really don't remember it, it because it's not something that will stand out in your mind. It's that simple to do, and it's so quick to do it. So all this is, is, is possible in seconds. Now, using the gels. Um, this is really cool. And just for those of you that did not know it, because I didn't know it and I had to learn it, I don't know if I just wasn't in the room at the time or whatever the case was, but when I attended the class, I didn't know that there was a gel holder underneath the lens platform. So if you didn't know about it, guess what? Look, surprise, it's great, makes it work. And I want to show you something else. If you look right here and see this lip that should always be painted uh, pointed towards the screen. You see the slide in here. The bottom of the slide should be up against the lip and that lip should be pointing towards the screen always. But in this particular setup we used a colored gel and I had the young lady on the floor. I was using a carpeting as my flooring and I put a the um, gobo in here as you can see under the camera lens and I put it in there darkened this on the final image just so that I could make that transition but it's very easy that's the same as a full length very easy to do and it just gives me what I wanted now your designer discs I love these things you can do so much with them make them focus, not focused, whatever you want to do. Here's something that, that I did with the same young lady. These are all her high school senior pictures. Um, I got a chance to play and we just did a whole lot of neat things just using it in different ways. In fact this is where I discovered that I could actually take and put two screens together to show one big screen. We've actually done dance schools now on mating the two screens together so that we had 17 feet of screen. We used a 9 foot wide background and an 8 foot wide background and gave us 17 feet of screen to give 
um, just total capabilities of being able to do large groups. I didn't put any of that in here, but um, you'll see in the backgrounder that's coming out shortly um, this month that that is something that's very possible and very doable, and it's not hard to do. So keep your eyes and e ears peeled. Now, the piece of plastic, a designer disc, and a colored gel setup. Remember, we've got the plastic here, we've got the gel here, but now we don't have the slide holder. So, it's real important that we turn around and we block that light. So we have to take and put that um, slide holder there just to block the light from hitting the screen. And that's what happens. Uh, if you're wondering why that that lip has to be there, light will actually escape from when it, the light box lens up to the uh, the uh, camera lens on the light lens platform. It will escape and it will go towards it's possible for it to be reflected on the screen and you will see a, a lightening of the black mesh and a shadow of the person's head because it's usually shooting up at them and when that happens you're gonna wonder what am I doing why am I having this light leak that's what it is it's coming out from that part of the projector so that's why you have to have that blocking the light at all times okay color harmony can't tell you what this does um, for people and for images. Um, I know this is kind of a crude way to put it, but what it does is it basically makes the clothing disappear. And when I say that, it's because it's blending. Your eyes don't go to the clothing. Your eyes go to the subject matter. Now, in most cases, you don't want bare arms, especially on ladies. These look still very nice. You want it to go. your eyes to go to their face and uh, very rarely will you ever want a full length image where you want to see everything at one time it's it's always an image of the face in other words if you went to a bride and asked her can I take a picture of just the dress in other words I'll cut you off um, at the neck in my image and take just the dress would you be interested in buying that and she's probably gonna look at you and go well no because she wants to see her in the dress the dress is the accessory. The primary subject is the person and their face. So if you did a two-thirds or one-third or a half, all that's good. Full length, that's all good because it shows their face. But you start cutting heads off, people aren't going to want it. So that tells me that the most important part of the image is the face. So we want to make sure the face is always in every image. And we want to make sure that the face is lit to where you see it and that's your focal point and I'm not saying that every image is like that yeah you'll, you'll have times where maybe that's not the focal point don't get me wrong but 99% of the time I think most people want to see the face and that's where your focal point is going to be so or faces and when you match the clothing it makes you look at faces instead of everything else color harmony it's great you can sit here I love doing it I love making colors just work and it just gives you just a very very nice look because your eyes go where they should now here's something that's kind of fun backgrounds are everywhere and you can have fun making your own abstract backgrounds and they harmonize with the client very popular and very simple to create well, remember the plastic trays I was talking about? Well, guess what? You can go to Dollar Tree. You can buy these pieces. One's a napkin holder, then two different trays. Total cost was $3.50. Really cheap. Now, they're very hard, brittle plastic. So if you get it thinking that, oh, I'll just cut it out with some tin snips or something like that. Uh, been there, done that, doesn't work. Don't try it. What you have to do is actually cut through them into squares or triangles similar to this. What I had to use was an X-Acto knife, score the parts that I wanted it to, and then snap it out or score it all the way through so that you have these edges. 
because if you just try to break it out it's not going to work you try to cut it with anything not going to work if you have a, a small band saw you can probably do it pretty easily but I mean a small band saw um, or jigsaw possibly but you know that might that might get rough too but all you got to do is do it cut them out you'll be fine now when you do cut them out here's some quick examples of just some different looks no they're not perfect no or anything like that I just did them for illustration showing you how quickly you can have some different designs now you mix that up with other slides other gels other pieces of plastic you can make some pretty neat textures here okay fundamental rule you want to take pictures of people with backgrounds not backgrounds with people keep the tonality close to your subject matter so in other words you've seen some images that were way too bright a background they don't necessarily look good some of them might be too dark they don't look good you want to keep the tonality close and when you're doing that for instance this background is just way bright okay well this is a little more subtle it's actually almost it's actually the same background just a little more subtle toned down and you can do that in machine and uh, this is showing a little brighter than I I would like but the point being is don't have your backgrounds brighter than your subject matter you don't want to do that you want to be able to go to your subject matter and see them not just the background and I know some people like a sharp background that's fine not saying you can't do that I just like to have mine a little softer and a little more of the tonality matching my subject matter rather than much brighter. We all know how much time, if you have a system, we all know how much time you can save. Uh, it's amazing. Remember me telling you that decor element that I got from the casino, it was the grill work, and we had an image, I told you I zoomed in on it. Well, here's that image zoomed in. Now, to do that, all I did was she did the pose, and I zoomed in, and that was what I wanted. It just kind of worked. So here's black and white textures with a red gel. Here's just an image. Um, actually, that's a Simone image. The Simones, uh, Simones, that a lot of people call them. The correct pronunciation is the Simones. But um, they've got some beautiful slides that we have for sale. Uh, that work very well. This is also another one of their slides. This is one of our, I think, beginning backgrounds. But the different lighting, different ways of doing things, you can do this so much faster, which gives you a wider variety to give your clients or for you to see what sells best. So you work with your client, get an idea, work with the slides, do the variations, it allows you to do it very quickly, and then see what you like best after you've tested them. Very, very easy to do. Now, how many people have ever done the silhouettes, like I said? So when you're thinking about the backgrounds you need, think about textures, think about the lighting, and the depth that can you and and the things that can be used in multiple situations not just one not everyone is going to want a winery or the Eiffel Tower or the mountains in their picture I mean yeah that's all cool but if you don't make it look real with your lighting it's not going to look real so you've got to match your lighting those other images that you saw of the beach um, he has done an exceptionally good job with lighting because they look like they're really there at the beach in the water or what have you. So you still have to be a photographer when you're using this system and when you're doing your slides. But you have to make sure you are capable of matching the lighting in your slide in your studio if you want it to look believable. If you don't, that's up to you. Non-distinctive or abstract backgrounds, either with directional light or non-directional light, man, they're just the bomb. You can do so much with them. You can have so much fun with them. Um, this was just some vertical or some horizontal lines uh, on a slide. We blurred it, stuck it in there with an orange gel. 
and what a cool looking background and then all we did was turn off our main lights we now have silhouettes how cool is that and we were just sitting here goofing off having fun this was at our workshop out in Texas so it's a lot of, it's just a lot of fun doing this type of thing the textures of the walls the carpets the ice fixtures everything like that makes for great backgrounds especially if you're printing them on your own inkjet we offer a photographic workshop that teaches lighting, posing, marketing, and sales along with all aspects of the projected virtual background system. We would love for you to be part of it. If you need more information, call us. If you want to come to the workshop, I guarantee it will make a difference in your photographic skills. I will personally guarantee that to you. Um, we have a lot of fun. We get to know each other we teach each other we all work together we all actually learn from each other I'm not saying I know everything but I tell you what by the time we all leave everybody's just shaking their head saying wow I do it a little bit differently than has been done in the past I give you three full days of hands-on with this system so if you haven't uh, had a, uh, a refresher in a long time please feel free to come in and attend one of our workshops uh, get in touch with crystal we'd love to sign you up for one come in and get a refresher I'm sure that you will see something new that you have not seen in the past whether it be in lighting or posing or marketing or something like that and but most of all you're gonna get three days of hands-on and then we're gonna all sit here and critique and work with you and let's make it perfect okay or as perfect as we can make it Thank you again for being part of this webinar. There will be more coming, but feel free to let us know what you'd like to see, and thanks for attending. Okay? Come see us, and thank you. If I can be of any service to you, if you need more help, you can reach me at 336-382-6345 or at mark at barnettphotography.com. That would be my email. Let me know if I can be of help to you. Thanks again for attending. Hope to see you again in the future. Bye-bye.